on the Adam Carolla Show. Jermaine's got a movie coming out in just a few days, April 12th. It's called uh, Sting. And uh, I watch a trailer and I'm in. Because oh. all spider, all insect, all movies, a horror, horror with insect. I'm, I'm in. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, funny story. Uh, Bobcat Goldthwait, a uh, really good friend of mine, he uh, directed a, a sketch show that I was in a while back. And he told me to watch a movie called Windy City Heat. Oh, boy. Dude, I <laughs> cried. so I was laughing so hard. And, uh, you, you, of course, you're in it. But, like, I when they said, hey, you're going to do Adam's show, I was like, I got to tell Adam I saw that movie. And it's, like, one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Oh, God bless. Yeah. And also, thank you for bringing it up on the air. Because the last few times, uh, oftentimes I do this show and then the show ends. And then the person says to me, "Here, yeah, I saw your movie, The Hammer, and I really loved it. And I go, why don't you say it in the <laughs> goddamn <laughs> microphone yeah. every once Can't in a while? This does happen I a get lot. it a lot. They I get, wait I get a lot of <laughs> off-air compliments, but they, sh- they button their lip when they're Come on, on air. man. No, nah, that movie's fire, dude. Nah, I thoroughly <laughs> I, enjoyed listen, it. Listen, I, I feel um, free to heap praise on Windy City Heat because I didn't write it, and I, I was in it, and I knew about it, and I sort of was around for the making of it, yeah. but I, I don't, I didn't direct it, I didn't write it, I didn't star in it. So I can go, this is a legitimately funny movie. Yeah. It's one of the funniest, I'm not going to call it like the best comedy, but it's one of the best laugh for laugh comedies. You will laugh all the way through that movie. I was crying, dude. Like, I, I'm not even, it's, <laughs> it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. I've, I've always been a fan of like Spinal Tap and this was totally in that, that you know, that, that world. So it, it was very true as it was filmed. Bob directed it and Bob Cat was also the director in the, the movie. And that was his friend too, right? Uh, Perry? Yeah. Well, <laughs> This is perfect. I love this. All right. So when yeah. I, so Jimmy Kimmel and I were a sort of comedy team. All right. And then somehow we got on to this group of people that were doing this kind of running art experiment up on with Scary Perry Caravello. Yeah. And all these guys play different characters in their life. <laughs> And so what it was is it, it was it was like an actual art experiment. Like Jimmy would say to me, "Hey, what are you doing Saturday night?" And I'd go, uh, "I don't I don't have any plans." You go, "Okay, we're going over to Don's apartment. Uh, Perry's coming over. Perry thinks Mole stole a piece of priceless art." Uh, now. And I'd go, well, who am I? And they'd go, oh, well, he recognizes you, so you're just going to play Adam Carolla. <laughs> but this guy's going to play the art dealer with the German accent. And then this. Now, at some point, Mole's going to put his foot through the art when they start arguing about it. He's going to put his foot through And I would just show up, and we do this whole play for kicks. Yeah. And it was just a kind of a it – was, it, I don't know. It's like sometimes there's those art installments where people play – Human beings in a in an actual painting. Yeah, it, it's, it was like that. It was like some sort of weird moving art. It's like Joe Schmo from Spike TV. Remember that show, Joe Schmo? Yeah, like that. Yeah, okay, okay. And it was just yeah. something to do. Yeah. And so it was understood that this is what we're going to do. And they would con- constantly come up with these elaborate ruses. <laughs> uh-huh. And then they decided we should make a movie about it. And we had the. I don't know, was it the 20th anniversary or something? I went and watched it with everybody. But all the guys in the movie, like Yergi, Uh the porn director and Uh stuff. Yes, yes. These are just dudes. Everybody was acting. Um, (sighs) It it, it made me laugh. Uh, I don't know if there were... There are certain little moments, and I think, I guess about a really good movie like this, is there are certain little moments, like when Bobcat (laughs) is the director, and he does everything through his bullhorn. (laughs) Every, so line, yeah. every conversation he has is through a bullhorn. <laughs> and so at some point, Perry's like, do you need to yeah, use yeah, the yeah. bullhorn when we're just talking? And he goes, oh, yeah, sorry, I got you. And he turned it down. And then he kept using it. Yeah. And I don't know why it's those weird little moments that made me laugh. Dude, no, nah, it's it's just perfect. I, I remember walking away, like, I wish I thought of that. And, like, Bobcat has the best stories about He's just the best. So, uh, well, how do you know Bob? He uh, directed a, a sketch show I did on True TV. Uh, my first like ever like 
I don't know, a starring TV role uh, that I had with a group of friends of mine called uh, Lucas Brothers, Jen Bartels, uh, Kevin Barnett, and jo- Joshua Benowitz, and Lil Rel Howery. We all on a show together, and he directed a lot of the sketches, and he just quickly became our friend and just would give us the funniest. I look up to him so much, so like it was so cool how co- he was so cool, you know what I mean? Like it was great. Um, but yeah, he, he was just, you know, he's just a great director and loves Bigfoot. He had a Bigfoot tattoo on his ass. Oh, I missed yeah. that one. Oh, you, you didn't show you his Bigfoot tattoo? Uh, I may have been drunk. Uh huh. Yeah, it was yeah, dark. Yeah. But yeah. he, uh, yeah, he 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 directed bits for the Man Show. Yep. And he was always great at directing those bits. Mm-hmm. And there's something about that short form vignette thing that it takes a re- like. It, the whole bit's three and a half minutes yep. long, so you got to find all the funny immediately. Immediately yeah. in three and a half. In three and a half minutes. He'll do that. Yeah, that's with Bob. The dude is just one of a kind, man. No, I I agree, and I'm glad he turned you on to uh, Windy City Heat. Of course. If you guys do, like, a, a Rocky Horror Show, uh, uh, another, like, you know, screening of it or something, I would love to be there. I don't know, but if you have one, you have to. It's just, it's so funny. The whole cast, too, if you guys are, like, doing it, please. Yeah, yeah, it was. So. Uh, I don't know. We did it like four months ago or something oh, like that. that show. Yeah, they got. They did yeah, we should have invited. <laughs> we should have invited. She came you. on there. I would have. <laughs> I, I wish I knew, but I'll wait. I'll wait for the next one. I'm not. I'm not joking. Well, either, they're man. coming out with another Spinal Tap. I think. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. what I hear. Brad Williams is in it. What? Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh. Oh I didn't man. Know that. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, but aren't you? Treading on sacred territory, like is you uh, always are when you're doing that type of thing, right? Isn't that? Yeah, aren't you in danger of taking something and compromising the original? Yeah, I mean, I, I trust everyone mm-hmm. yeah. to do a great job, but can you capture lightning in a bottle two times, and then there's also a little inherent disadvantage, like when you make Jaws two. <laughs> we got exposed to the shark already. <laughs> Half of Jaws was learning about this shark. Right. You know what I mean? Now we know the shark. Like, right. Or like if you remade Coming to America. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how, how could you, how could you, how you know, you live that? up to the original? Right. But no, comedy is harder, I believe. Um, horror movies and, and uh, you know, other genres, like, I feel like it's a, you get a bit more grace. Okay. It's it's easier. I I think it's easier to do aliens. You know, you know what I'm versus saying? alien. Yeah, I I get it. But you have the director who I think um, like really Scott did the original, and then uh, James Cameron did the second one, and then Fincher did Fincher did the third one. I don't know. I think, I think so. David Fincher did the third one, and it's like you get three different artists, you know, uh, and and people who just envision something completely different than the original. I think that helps a lot because you don't want to, you you just can't, you know, what I'm saying? like look at uh. I like Prometheus, but it's not the original Alien. And Ridley right. did that one. So, I don't know. Is, uh, uh, so, Brad Williams is going to be in Spinal Tap 2. Yeah. Is he going to play one of the gnomes who dances <laughs> around the 18-inch high Stonehenge? Unclear, but okay. we can speculate. So, that. we'll have to, we'll have <laughs> we'll to see. Because in that movie, they yeah. had the little people yeah. come out and, and dance around the 18-inch yeah. Stonehenge. If, if he's not, would you be disappointed? It's, it's made for a small person, <laughs> but I don't well, think... Well, I, I will say this. Wee Man is also in it. Uh-oh. So they may be dancing. And I think they may be in the... Yeah, doing some scenes together. Um, by the way, Brad Williams and you are going to be in Irvine at the Improv on May 23rd. Oh, so, well, good. I'll ask him in person. Yeah, we'll talk about then. Also, you're in uh, Ricky Stanicki, which I've heard about. Zac Efron and Cena, uh, Andrew John Santino. Cena, yeah, Andrew William Santino. H. Macy. Yeah, what? What's that? When's that coming out? That came out on um, Amazon. Oh, is it out? Like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I yeah. Gotta April seventh, I believe. There it is, right there. Uh, we shot that in Australia, and oh. uh, yeah, we uh, it was supposed to be set in Rhode Island, but apparently there are places in Australia that look like New England. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, should we watch that one, too? That's basically kind of the plot of uh, Windy City Heat. Oh, without really? The, yeah, without the reality. It's kind of the same kind of <laughs> concept. The, uh, do you know what it's about? No, no. I want to see it. Oh, okay. Well, I want, I, I want to surprise you, so you just go ahead and watch it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's on Prime. Um, so, Sting, how did that come about for you? 
For me, uh, my manager, she's wonderful. She told me there was a, a horror movie shoot in Australia, and uh, she wanted me to be in it. And I was like, maybe the script. Read the script. It was great. Uh, I love Kia Roche Turner. Uh, he's a dope director. So flew out there for the first time to Australia. Uh, it blew me away. I've never been that far away from <laughs> from my home before. And uh, the first time I, I get there, I use the bathroom, lift the toilet up, spider right in my toilet. Oh, really? really? Yeah. 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 Uh, Australia has very dangerous spiders, right? Dangerous spiders and people. Yes. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything's, Everything's dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're cool. Like, they're the most down-to-earth people I've ever, like, they're so self-deprecating. They Everything's a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're so funny. Uh, I had an amazing time out there. I'm, I, I, when I went there, I was surprised. I was, I was like, why do I live in America? Like, I want to, <laughs> I want to live there. I want to go to, I want to go to Australia, New Zealand. It seems like, they were just cool, man. Everybody was so down-to-earth, man. It was dope. I worked with an Australian guy named Frazier when I did earthquake rehab work in the mid later 80s and he was from australia and he was nuts like he was but fun mm -hmm. but nuts and we had this thing where <laughs> we're rehabbing this building that was in koreatown that was an old brick building that was about six stories tall and they're all single units and it was pretty depressing it was like government subsidized housing mm-hmm and this is in the late 80s, and there was one woman named Millie who lived there since they opened the place, okay. which means she's just a colossal loser. <laughs> I mean, I, they opened the place in like 1915, and she's been living there for like 62 years, right? In a, in a one, it wasn't in one bedroom. It was a bachelor. It was like no bedroom uh -huh. apartment. And they said after we got done rehabbing the building, I said, we need to go to the front of the building. We need to get Millie, who's, you know, 99 years old. And she's been living here for 65 years. And we need to all gather in front of the building at lunchtime. And we'll get the whole crew. And we'll put Millie in the middle. And we'll all stand around her. And we'll take this group shot for Millie, who's going to turn 100 years old and has lived in this building since it was, since opening day. Mm -hmm. And everyone got around her. And we all started, you know, the camera guy's like, all right, everyone, you know, move in. And Frazier from Australia, it was crazy, was next to her. And I was like on the other side. And he, the camera was like, all right, now one, two. And then Frazier lets a huge fart go. Mm -hmm. And everyone goes, God <laughs> damn it. And then everyone clears out and no one ever came back. No, nah, that's a bad that And she went. never got her picture. God damn. That's right. <laughs> I wish I had that picture. <laughs> Today, me at 25, standing with Millie. But Millie, 99 years old, never got her group shot in front of her beloved building because Frazier was Australian and he was nuts. And he farted. And he let a big fart go and everyone cleared out. It destroyed that moment. Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. I've never heard a fart doing that. Usually people kind of, you know, like, all right, that's fine. You know, we'll uh, regroup. We'll just kinda, not regroup. We'll just kind of like, f you know, fight it out and stick stick to the, you know, stay focused, take the picture, and then laugh about it later. But I've never heard a fart clearing, <laughs> clearing out a whole group of people like that before. That's he, a, he, he lived out of a camper van, like a VW camper van, and he would eat lunch in it. And that's the first time I had Vegemite. And ugh. I was like, ugh. That shit is gross. It is gross. Don't get it. It is the opposite of barbecue. Like for whatever. If someone says, what's Vegemite like? I'd be like, do you like do you barbecue? Like barbecue? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's, it's the exact opposite of that. You can't like both. No, no, it's, no, no, Barbecue is savory and sweet and tangy and everything, everything that is good. And then there's Vegemite. The barbecue gives me hope for the world. Barbecue, that's the one that puts a, a smile on my face all the time. Like anytime I'm eating it, it doesn't. Yes. You, you know what I mean? Like just yes. ribs, beef ribs. Ah, oh, man. It's how you know we're supposed to eat meat. Mm -hmm. Because you go into a barbecue place and you start getting aroused. Like you start going, oh, yeah. And you get primal. Like, you get a little yeah, primal, you get too. Primal. You get like, yeah. Yeah. where the fuck is that meat at? You, right. you can choose it. 
You can choose the music. And then you start getting, you get a little territorial. Like yeah. if you do the big family <laughs> style, because I'll go with a guy named Mike. Who it's like, Mike, you've had four pieces of brisket, bro. I'm still working on my first rib here. Now back off. You pick up a fork, I'll stab your ass. Like, you, get away from the meat. It's like you're around a fire it's no in your joke. caveman. You're a yes, yes, as, as a fucking fact. Do you have like a go-to barbecue joint? Like, when we travel, we'll go to like Martin's in Nashville and, Nash. and, and all sorts of places around, you know, I'll I'll usually do shows, go on the road, and we'll go, where's the barbecue? If same, we're in the right town. Same with me. If I'm filming something, I have to know where barbecue is. Uh, I like Texas, North Carolina, Tennessee, great. But the best barbecue I've ever had is in Brooklyn. Oh, really? It's a place called Fetty Sal. Uh, mm. It's in uh, Williamsburg. And I haven't had ribs and brisket like that ever. It's so good. It's, mm. oh my God, I'm hungry now. Yeah. But it's perfect. And I, I can eat like barbecue. It, it doesn't have to be a special day. I can eat it like whenever and I'm happy. Like it's just, yeah. I, yeah. I don't trust people that don't like barbecue. I would agree. I would agree with that. It's, I would agree with that. It's the only time I've ever thought about getting violent with my kids. I went like, like, I was like a Friday. I'm like, oh, let's go get some barbecue. Like, we don't want barbecue. I'm like, like you who don't are want, you? Who are you? You're you not my come, children. You don't come from my loins. <laughs> 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 who doesn't? Could you imagine being 12 and having your parents go barbecue and you go, I don't think so, old man. Like, are you nuts? It's not even an option. I couldn't look at them the same. Yeah. You know? Do you cook at barbecue? Do you, do you barbecue yourself? I have done, I'll do a little, but I. I let the pros handle it. I hear I you. I gotta be honest. I gotta say, I I've been to Austin and they 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 talked about the barbecue. They talked it up to me, and maybe the reason it, it didn't hit so hard is because it was talked up so much. But I mm -hmm. had it, and I will say, um, it wasn't. It was kind of a letdown. Mm. And it was called a uh, black uh, iron iron cask, uh, something like that. Anyway, I had it there, and I was let down a bit. I felt like the sauce was better than the actual meat. Mm. And you know what I'm saying? Like it yeah. felt. What's the barbecue power rankings for you? Where do we start? Uh, Given everything, let's just say the best. The everything best? is the best. Who makes the best? I've had some fire barbecue in New York. It, it was great. But if you want brisket, you want ribs, you want pork ribs, you know, with baby back and I can't beef do pork ribs. ribs. I don't like pork. Pork has this, this texture. I, I really... So you go beef ribs. Go beef ribs. Good. All right, what Man. are your sides? Yeah. Say it again? Sides. Oh, my sides? You don't think I'm crazy, but I don't... Well, broccolini probably. Oh. But but that's it. I only do the broccolini because I need fiber. You know, I can't just... Mm. You know, I can't. It's a health thing. You got to pretend it, that's you're That's the only reason. Healthy. It's not a taste thing. Fuck that. No, yeah. I'm eating the brisket. <laughs> I don't want any distractions. So that's my thing. But uh, um, potato salad probably. Yeah. But again, I don't want to fill my stomach on shit I don't really care about. Like, right. I'm going straight barbecue. So yeah. I'll just fill up on the briskets and... Oh my god! I'm sorry, my mouth is water. And uh, and and the beef ribs. That's all I eat. I never wanted barbecue so badly in my life. You too, right? Right now, dude. I'm Jones and Hard. Do you live around here? Uh, I live. Well, okay. There's two places I live. I'm in Malibu half the time. Lucky there ass. is zero barbecue in Malibu. There's zero. zero. There's. What is it? I, I like Malibu. But there's 14 sushi places. There's no yeah. mal. There's yeah. no barbecue. Broad like Street. I, when I'm in charge, yeah, I'm just gonna show up at an Indian place or a Thai place or a sushi place and go. Sorry, you're going barbecue. We're, 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 the, we have there's too a, many. It's, there's an imbalance in yeah. the force. There's, yeah. there's sushi everywhere. There is no barbecue. We yeah. need to. We need to fix this. Problem, and it's not a hard thing to solve. Like it's barbecue seems like the easiest thing to, to me. Like I, I feel like any everywhere. You need should... old pictures of people <laughs> barbecuing. <laughs> Simply Safe Spring has sprung. Fresh air, fresh starts. Take a fresh look at Simply Safe Home Security. It's the one I use. It's the one we all use. They've been with us for a long time. And when you move, you just take your system with you. Name best home security system of 2024 by U.S. News uh, and World Report. Best customer service, according to Newsweek, blankets your home with indoor and outdoor cameras, plus sensors for break-ins, fire, flood, and more. 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a buck a day. No contract, 60-day 60, 60 risk-free trial. Do not love your system? Then return it for a full refund. So what do you got to lose? Simply safe, two eyes in there. Well, they gave me, many of my listeners, peace of mind. And you should have it too. Get 20% off your system today 
when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Get the 20% off at simplysafe.com slash Adam. That's simplysafe.com. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts, O'Reilly Auto Parts. They're in the business of keeping your car on the road. They offer friendly, helpful service and the parts, knowledge, and everything else you need to maintain and repair your vehicle. They've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online. You never have to worry if you're in a jam. They got your part. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of your car. It's nice not to have to yank that thing. If it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. Need your windshield wipers replaced, brake light fixed, or quick service? They'll help you find the right parts or point you in the nearest local uh, repair shop so uh, you can have the pros do it. Whether you're a car aficionado or an auto novice, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are knowledgeable, helpful, and all friendly. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto, do it yourself. And you can find out what you need in store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today, or you can give them a visit O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. Here's a theory. Tell mm-hmm. me what you think of this theory. Mm-hmm. They always kind of do this thing where they go like, well, booze is kind of a truth the serum. The truth serum, yeah. The truth serum. I think the truth serum is sleep. And this is where I started to put my thesis together that uh-huh. women are a lot more angry than men. Mm-hmm. Because anytime you wake a woman up, she's got no sympathy. Like, and here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. I've had this happen. You got to get up. Let's just say you got to get up at 4.45 in the morning because you got a 7 a.m. LAX flight because you got to hop the first flight because you're going to work somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. You don't have pre-check. Yeah. And you don't have TSA pre. <laughs> or, and, and so you, you get up at 4.45 and you're in the bathroom and you're like brushing your teeth and your woman's got nothing to do that day. She's going to sleep till 10 a.m., you're going to be halfway to Atlanta by the time she gets out of bed. Mm-hmm. And you're in there brushing your teeth, and you put the glass down. It makes like a clank or something. And you'll hear her yell from the bedroom, can you stop it? And yes. she'll go, ugh. And she'll like put her pillow over her head. And it's like, first off, how heartless can you be? I have to get up, get dressed, brush my teeth, pack my shit, get in an Uber, <laughs> go to LAX. You're going to be sleeping this entire thing. But I woke you up, what the- and you're livid. But that's their true nature. That's like being drunk, but it's even better. It's deeper. Dude. It's who they are. Dude. And they get angry Dude. fast. A lack of sleep. I'm a different person. Yes. I have two kids, <clears throat> four and, and, and six. She'll be seven in July. And when I don't sleep, when I when I'm when I'm just Anyone wakes me up, like even if sometimes they come in my room and you know they want to sleep in the bed with us and stuff, right. and I get primal, I get really yes. angry. I'm I'm like, why would you do that? I, I have daddy has to sleep, you know. But again, they're the cutest things in the world. So I go, okay, fine. But I don't sleep. I I'm a different person. It's it, it barbecue and sleep. Yeah, those you have to have them. I think we're that, simple creatures. Yeah, yeah, that should be someone's <laughs> a part of someone's campaign trail this year. Like, just <laughs> we have the Uncle Ben's commercial from 1981, which would have been about the time we were in Tijuana. You got my it? friend passed out. Byron uh, found it. Oh my! Do I remember? <laughs> You're too young to remember. No, but they would like do SNL. Uh, uh, I, I watch SNL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can play it. Let's see if I find. Um, but no, I grew up on the, uh, on that race. And Where'd you grow up? Maryland. Oh, I grew up in Maryland, uh, Hyattsville, Maryland. Born in DC, Northwest, but Hyattsville, Maryland, PG County. That's a uh, yeah. Right and from. when did uh, what was the plan before acting in comedy, or was there a plan? Oh, dude, the plan was to be a botanist. Oh, really, dude? Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to study plants. I used to go. I used to go out in the woods and bring flowers back and make my own tea. Like, really? Yeah, I made, I made, I used to make rose tea and stuff like that. Uh, make everybody sick in the house. And then uh, uh, at one point, uh, I watched Def Comedy Jam and uh, was like, I want to make people laugh. And then, uh, 
And then um, I would go to school and do like Simpsons impressions. Uh, I was really big on the Simpsons, Ralph Wiggum and Hans yeah. the Mole Man. Well, now we got to hear a little round. Why does, no, it, I, I've hit puberty kind of. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's different. Um, but no, I would talk like Ralph. Like, you right. know, I would do that all the time. And uh, uh, at one point I realized I wasn't going to college because I, I couldn't afford it. And my grades were too mediocre. Like I was a, up until one point, like until I discovered, you know, sex, I was a good student. And uh, at one point, when I lost my virginity, like my grades dipped. Mm. Yeah, I was like, I'm half day at school. I know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know. And then, um, boom, uh, I, I decided to be a stand-up. Only because I wanted to act. I wanted to be an actor. So I thought that would be a good way into it. Yeah, I had my two best friends, one of them who was passed out in the back of the car. Um, they discovered sex mm -hmm. in high school. Mm -hmm. And that's when everything else went out the window. No more football, yeah, no man. more practice, yeah. no more grades, yeah. no more nothing. That's all the athleticism you need. It just became sex <laughs> yeah. at that point. Yeah. Because <laughs> you discover that, you know, you get into sex in your 20s or 30s. I don't mean lose your virginity. I was saying you have, you have a balance. Mm -hmm. You have like a life balance. But you discover that shit when you're 15 and a half or 16. Yep. Uh, everything else can wait. Yeah. It, it goes by the wayside. It, that and stand up <laughs> was what I wanted to do. You got to combine the two. Yeah, if you could. Uh, there are probably some venues. But um, yeah, I moved to New York like a year and a half in after doing stand up in uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia for a little bit. And uh, I was in New York for eight years before I moved here. Uh, we found the Uncle Ben's one that I wanted. <laughs> oh, all right. The one you wanted, yes. The one my friend yelled <clears throat> when he was passed down in the back of a Celica. How'd you feel when that happened? I always ask people when, who, you see Star Wars in theaters when you were a kid, right? Yeah. How'd you feel when it wasn't James Earl Jones? Or like, did you know it was James Earl Jones? No, I, I was too, I was young okay, okay. For, for that. I didn't, I didn't have any stereotypical or mm -hmm. I didn't know who James Earl mm -hmm. Jones was. Yeah, good parents, yeah. I watched the shit out of Roots. <laughs> oh, man. I saw all eight episodes. Dude. We watched, I think it was eight episodes. That was the biggest you know, there are things that capture the zeitgeist now, but kind of not really because we're too fractioned off mm -hmm. and sectioned off and whatever. Roots was a thing. Mm -hmm. It captured everyone. You just had to sit, you know, no recordings. You had to just sit in front of the TV when it aired at that time and watch it in real, real time. I think it was eight parts. But we sat there in uh, North Hollywood, and our black and white Zenith TV set. Yeah. And we just watch Roots. And my mom, who's a was sort of hippie, mm -hmm. kind of guilty, she would just look at me every 10 minutes and go, mm, you see what we did? Do you see what we did? Like, and I'm we? like, we? We're, we're, we're living in squalor over here, baby. I don't know if we... Squalor. Our, I come from a family of renters. Dude. We weren't owners. We didn't own anything. That's funny. And it's not like we got acreage here in North yeah, Hollywood. We yeah, got yeah. a lot that your grandma let us live on. <laughs> Are you kidding? Dude, we? I was uh, I was big on the Rosewood. Rosewood is my movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it, was, it wasn't like... They were fighting back. You know, like, that was, like, the movie I watched over and over again. Did you ever sit down and watch the entire... Did you watch Roots? I don't remember. I watched Zulu. Oh, uh, and uh, my dad made me watch Zulu when I was a kid. Shaka Zulu, that movie, mm -hmm. when it came on UPN. I watched that all the time. But Roots, I don't remember. I don't remember Roots. We need to uh, take a quick break. Jermaine mm -hmm. Fowler's going to hang out. On we'll, that note. We'll get into more of everything. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, God damn it! I screwed that up. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I'm rhythm oriented. Uh, so didn't watch Roots. Sorry. Yeah. Should watch Roots. You should watch, watch Roots. on UPN. UPN was a like, yeah, like just Moesha. for a street cred, you know. No, I read it, but I didn't. I didn't see it. I had watched Roots in school. Oh, you did. Yeah, that was I think school view. I don't class. remember. I don't remember if I watched it or not. But Rosewood, I watched Rosewood so much, so much because there was there was um I don't know there was just it felt like it was. It was just the revenge. It was like it was earned. I loved it. I loved every bit of it. How did uh, botany fall into your lap as a young person? It seems strange to me that anyone would be into it. Well, in Maryland, there's nothing but green. It, it's just, it's all, it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, where we lived, we were just around so much nature. And I was always out. But 
as far as me, oh, my mother got me a uh, microscope set when I was a kid, and I would take the plants home, cut them in half, and um, study mitochondria mm-hmm. <laughs> and all these cells that were in it. It just fascinated me. I don't know why, but I can't explain why it fascinated me. Have you messed with those apps that you just take a picture of the leaf? Yes. And it just tells you exactly yes. what that plant is. We, it's incredible. I garden in my front yard, in my backyard with my kids. Uh, that's how I teach my daughter about math. And all the things to make you know learning fun. I try to make it more interactive. So yes, I, we use that app and all types of shit. There used to be tons of kits. Like when I was a kid, I didn't have any of this stuff because we were poor. But they had kits for like making creepy crawlers in a weird bake oven thing. Yeah, yeah. Weird same. Hot that's a thing. very nineties thing too. Yeah. yeah. They mm-hmm. had weird internal combustion engines where you could like build a model and it would be clear and you would see how the valves work and the camshafts work that's and different. all that kind of stuff. They had a lot of invisible stuff, like the invisible human body. Here are the organs and here's how here's what a rotary engine looks like. Like these clear what? kits uh. so you'd like crank them and you'd see oh here's how a wankel engine which yeah, is a rotary engine the mechanisms and right the yeah. mechanisms like yeah. how it works they had science kits yeah they had magic kits I'm, i love those like magic cards and magic kits mm-hmm. and all this everything was like sort of a hobby oriented yep. and you'd buy it and then you'd you work and you'd work your little kit mm-hmm. every time i see a magic store i'm just i just think how are you still, still in business? right still, what are, i agree but i think those kits are great because it just lets you know what you you know i do you like this or you don't like it let's try it today oh i don't like magic oh i don't like uh car engines i don't like plants you know like national geographic have they have these boxes these kits in target and i get my kids a kit you know every every couple months where they can just kind of do volcano experiments or just science stuff you know uh when i was a kid i was really big into science really i was like uh, magic school bus was my thing i love zabumafu that was something i watched all i didn't Yo. watch that what <laughs> oh is yeah that? it's this uh this zoology sort of kid show puppet talking to kids about animals and stuff <clears throat> you know um yeah it, it, that's what it was and that, that all those shows always fascinated me when i was a kid so i don't know how i got into acting i think nicholas cage was the reason i got into acting what movie definitely. the rock oh yeah yeah, yeah oh we, we in agreement the oh, rock 100%. is 100 come on 100%. man sean man come on man spill the same blood in the same mud yo any movie where they yell stand down more than four times <laughs> yeah yeah that's ed harris oh, baby yeah. yo man i love that movie that movie anytime it comes on tbs on a oh. sunday i'm watching that joint man Every, everyone killed it ah oh, tony todd is in it come on dude like it's man oh it's uh it's yeah. so it's so good it's Nick Cage at his most Nick Cageous <laughs> because he does his thing where he's super quiet and then he explodes, he explodes. and starts yelling. Yeah, but he just got his Oscar right before that movie, I believe. And oh, for I Leaving th- Las Vegas? I think that was before Leaving Las Vegas, right? I don't know. Can you find out? But uh, I, I, be- if I'm cor- I hope I'm correct, but I think that's that was it. And I think he was just feeling himself a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I think he was like, I can do no wrong. And he didn't. You know, uh, Sean Connery's the greatest. Sean Connery, yeah. uh, uh, damn man, Michael Carla B. was the prom queen. Like all yeah, those lines, all those fire. lines. Con Air was after that. I was a sh- look, man. I think Nick Cage, Nick Cage is my favorite actor. I mean, of course, now was Matt Mickelson, uh, Sam Jackson, and uh, uh, it's so many. But I'm really I, I, Nicholas Cage is the is the dude. Con Air, great. Yeah, can't argue with Con, yeah. Con Air. A face off. Face of off, hard to argue with face off. John Woo, come on, man. Con Air, <clears throat> that guy had the worst lawyer on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about inadequate representation? <laughs> that was the worst. He had the worst lawyer ever. You stupid. He shows up at the bar after doing his patriotic chore over there in the Middle East. He comes back. He wants to be with his eight-month pregnant wife, who's working and they at the bar. Him. He goes, he's just like trying to hug her and rub on her belly yeah. and everything. And Monica Pot. Then, yeah, Monica's hot. Mm-hmm. And then they got the, <laughs> uh, the horrible hick towny the guys. Dude. Yeah. And they're like, hey, Goomer Pop. Yeah. And then he's like, listen, we don't want any trouble. And he balls up a five dollar bill and he throws it in his face. And those guys were so evil. Dude. And he lost the Even case. the guy did nothing. <laughs> All First off, 
You have 50 witnesses saying this guy walked in <laughs> and these drunken guys yeah. basically were harassing yeah. him and his pregnant wife. Yeah. Okay, and he said he didn't want any trouble. Right. Yeah, but then he, they were mm-hmm. so committed to doing evil <laughs> that yes. they stood outside in a rainstorm. <laughs> they no umbrellas. No, no. No tarp. No poncho. Like hyenas. No awning. <laughs> just waiting. They yeah. just stood there. <laughs> I'd be the world's worst henchman because I'd keep going, Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's rain. I'm stopping. Yeah, can I stop, at Thermia, yeah, yeah. stop at Walmart? These we'll boots are new. Yeah. 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 There's mud. It's a so dirt parking like, lot. Like, no, we're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. <laughs> then they wait by his truck till the place closes. Now, what score did they have to settle with Nick Cage? That they were waiting by his truck for an hour in a rainstorm for him to leave the bar. Why did they feel so wrong? Why did, I, how, how slighted? He disrespected them by saying, I don't want trouble? I don't know, but I do know. There was one important part. The guy pulled out a, a knife on uh, Nick. And Switchblade. Yeah, he wanted Illegal. to dance. He wanted, yeah. So after the after he shoves his uh, nose bone up his brain, uh, right. the uh, the guys run off with the, murder, uh, with the attempted murder weapon or whatever. And then they run away. That was important because they did a single shot on that. I remember that part. And I guess in court, the public defender, I'm sure it was a public defender. I know it's a public defender. He, he I guess he had a, a weak case. You know, there was no weapon that uh, that would that would have given Nicolas Cage the reason to want to take such action against another human being. So he did what 20, 20 years? No, not twenty years. Well, how many years was it? It's Twelve. Or oh, because the kid was like <clears throat> eleven or some some like that. He. I don't know. Uh, eight or no, maybe eight or nine. Something. Now we got to find the scene. Too much. Something. Worst representation yeah. ever because there's three guys. Yes. They jump him. Mm-hmm. One guy's got a switchblade mm-hmm. and he defends himself. Yes, he does. That's all. It's the judge's fault. The judge said in court, you're too much of a liability. Uh, you're, you're deadly arts or whatever. Said, because of your training. Yes, yes. You, you're essentially a deadly weapon. It's like, well, Pardon me for being able to protect myself, Your Sorry. Honor, when I'm being attacked by three guys in a party. Well, forget about the military. Let's just say I took a couple of jujitsu classes for self-defense. <laughs> what if it was a woman who no. went to a self-defense class and learned some techniques? Would, would you hold that right. against her if she was a rapist attacked her in a parking lot? It makes no sense. You, uh, you, you're making me rethink this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Can I tell you the problem? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Movies aren't humble enough and they're not real enough and what the movie should have done Mm -hmm. but they can't do it because they have a fundamental problem how do we make this guy a hero and get him incarcerated Mm -hmm. and the answer is it doesn't make sense what you guys laid out is him being jumped by three townies one of them pulling a Mm switchblade and now it's gavel Nine years in fe- state... Pre- no, yeah. no, it couldn't happen. It, it, they should have done. Yep. Mm-hmm. As they were celebrating. <laughs> they were celebrating, and he was ordering some drinks because he's just back from Iraq, yep. you right. know? And then he said uh, to his wife, like, hey, come on, you can have a glass of wine. And she'd go, I'm pregnant. And he'd go, mm-hmm. well, I'll drink enough for the two of us or whatever. And some point, yeah. few drinks, rainstorm, gets in his truck, windshield wipers kind of smearing it. Some uh, bus boy mm-hmm. on a bike is riding to down a t- cuts in front, honk, a horn, dead person. Dude. Right. Vehicular manslaughter. But they can't make him flawed at right. all. That would make him flawed. No. Now, in our minds, it doesn't make him human because it could happen to anybody. Right, right. But they can't do that. They have to make him a hero and put him in prison. They should have they, they had s- him just clip a Mexican driving home who was a bus boy. <laughs> Dallin, Dallin, that turn? Dallin, Wait, that, well, if it's a white person, turn, we'd be kind of upset. What the hell, Adam? We'd be too upset. No, but they were syruping a lot of like, let's make, let's let let's set the, you know, uh, pit the world against this guy. But yeah. again, like, I don't know if you read this book called High Concept. It's a, um, it's the story about how Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer would come up with ideas, and basically they're like biography in Hollywood, right? right? And so they would just come up with these high concepts, right? High concepts, you know. Uh, uh, Prisoner on a on a plane in, in the sky. It's a uh, it's Shawshank in the sky. You know that, right. that would, the, the pitch would, they would pitch like that, but you you just can't start a movie that way. You need like a beginning. You know how do we start right. the movie? Like, like get was, there. Like, yeah. Yes. So you had to start it. But but it wouldn't matter. That's just fodder. That's just like you know something we need to get to the plane. Yeah, part, yeah, yeah. You know. But I I agree. Did you write the original movie or some shit? Because you remember right. everything. I've seen it many times. I love that yeah. movie, man. We have the court. Love it. Eight. <laughs> I don't know, eight to nine years? Let's see. Oh, Simon thank you, Clark, dude. World's worst attorney. 
He's not even trying. The order of this court that you be remanded to a federal penitentiary where you shall remain incarcerated for a term not less than seven to ten years. Oh, mm. seven to ten. Mm. Which ain't bad. That's not bad. All right, would a smoking hot blonde hang out for a decade for this guy to get <laughs> sprung? Remember, the real life version of this guy is just some military hillbilly. Yeah. Guys get made thirteen grand a year from the military. And she's yeah. a piping hot blonde. You're not well, telling me she didn't hook up with some producer in the sixties and moved to LA? Probably did. She probably did and came back at some point. You know what I mean? Oh, you think she came back <laughs> when he got out? <laughs> she left uh Louisiana probably. Yeah. It came back at some point. She's probably lying in the letters too. I don't mm-hmm. know. That's like the sequel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which she did. No joke, but the lawyer didn't say a thing. Not not even like a ooh, rough. You know, right. like not, my bad. Nothing mm-hmm. at all. He just was like, Well, all right, on to the next case. No reaction. No reaction. The only reaction was from her. <laughs> But no, I, this is the first time I've seen that in so long, man. I love this movie. I feel like watching it now. And a barbecue. I want to do all that in one time. Oh, let's do that. Let's, let's do it, Adam. I'm totally down, dude. I saw your car collection. And, well, one car, but yeah. I'm yeah. down to Well, by the it. way, that car is owned by Mark Ergo's attorney who definitely would have got Cameron Poe <laughs> off of this bullshit charge of manslaughter for defending himself in a parking lot in a rainstorm. Then you wouldn't have a movie. Like, community service. All right, movie over. But <laughs> your attorney would parade a hundred people who were at the bar when these townies threatened somebody else fought they'd all have stories about how violent mm-hmm. and aggressive and horrible and, these yeah. people and were and those particular guys witnesses. probably have a record too this is not the first time they've done that's something that's what like. I'm saying exactly that's a good point dude yeah you know the bar hates having those guys <laughs> yeah come in. it's like it's like it's like roadhouse you know what I'm saying like they're, they're, they're regulars who come in and stab everybody and this one <laughs> yeah. time he wasn't <laughs> Cameron Poe was not having it where were the people like where that's were, another favorite scene was yeah. like in Roadhouse <laughs> <laughs> in Roadhouse you want to talk about conflict resolution yeah the one guy there's a chick dancing on the table right like in the middle of the Roadhouse flashing her tits and shaking her ass right mm-hmm. and then the bouncer walks over to her who's on the table and says like oh, man we can't have that here and puts his arm out and helps her down her boyfriend just pulls out a knife and lunges at it. Is that really your life? Is that a possible way to go through? How much, how fast would you be in jail if your conflict resolution was somebody going, sir, like, literally, like, if, if you were at a vending machine and it didn't give you proper change and you were like, hey, what's going on? And a guy came it's by like, and said, we're not able, and you just lunge at him with life it. Is every, every time someone shows up, you just lunge at them with a knife? What, what Michael Jackson video was it when they had the knife fight? They just taped their hands together and they were just lunging at each other. What was uh, that? Billy beat G? it. Beat it, beat it. It's like, that's basically that. You know what I mean? Like, yes. He Patrick Swayze, he's like, you gotta yeah, get off yeah. the table, and the guy's like, ah! And he, <laughs> I was watching that, you know, he like lunches stat, stat. at her with a at him with a knife. That's uh, but is that has that happened before? Did that come from someone's actual experiences? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, You're asking eight. Maybe. Could you expect to be at work Monday morning mm-hmm. if you would go out on a Saturday night with a knife? And lunge at anybody who disagreed with you. I don't have the confidence to stab somebody. Yeah, me neither. And it's too it's too intimate. I need it's to shoot intimate. somebody. I shoot somebody, oh, but yeah. I can't stab them. That's too much. Yeah, you know, like um, closeness. You're right. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. You don't Cage feel it. no won an Oscar in '96 for Leaving Las Vegas. And when was the Rock? '95 was the Rock. Oh. wait, what? Oh wait, wait. No, a no, 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 no. Leaving Las. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. He won an Oscar in 96 for Leaving Las Vegas in 95. All right. But anyway, Leaving Las Vegas was 95 and The Rock was 96. What That's a run for it. Yeah. Yeah. Cage. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's still a good run. The Pig is great. I love, um, what's the movie? The Dream? Dream Scenario. That's fire. Uh, I mean, damn. Um, the uh, Unbearable Weight of Massive oh, Talent. Yeah. Fire movie. I love that movie, Very too. Meta. Yeah, man. I'm in the cage oh. for that, dude. Yeah. You know what happened to me with that movie? Which one? <laughs> Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. What happened, man? They kept talking about that kids' movie. Paddington. Paddington Bear. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And Even about, Pedro Pascal. About the fourth yeah. time they said, Paddington. Paddington Bear is the best movie ever, I looked at the person I was watching the movie with, and I said, I've never seen Paddington Bear. And she went, you've never seen Paddington Bear? <laughs> and I said, no. And she goes, we need to watch Paddington Bear. And we shut it off and put Paddington Bear on. Was it worth it? I liked Paddington Bear a lot, but, but I don't think you should. Another movie I don't think you suggest time. other movies in the middle of your movie. I just find it funny that's a Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> 
Is Paddington Bear? Yeah, that's a Weinstein company. Oh, my God. Wow. wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, it's wild how that all don't works. Don't you out. have to? Doesn't he have to be the most miserable person in prison? And the and here's why I say it: mm-hmm. if you're your average person in prison, you may be a drug addict or a gangbanger or something like that. But your life is sleeping in crack houses, getting stabbed, and fighting with rival gangs, and stabbing Cameron Poe, stabbing like. Cameron Poe, and you got a pretty rough and tumble life, right? Mm-hmm. But not it's not yachts and parties nah. and champagne toast with Hillary Clinton and being the toast of the town and the bell of the ball. Like mm-hmm. if you are that person, now you go to prison. Like there's a lot of guys who go to prison and it's and, almost a lateral move yeah, from can, their horrible they can adjust. existence. Yeah. You know what I mean? In a, in a way, it's a little even more consistent. Look, yeah, they get three hots and a free cot. food. They get something. Mm-hmm. But his, the chasm between him, I mean, Cosby had a chasm, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But but Weinstein, his life, when it was rolling along, it's high society versus prison, <laughs> what, is there a gap? You know, look, Martha Stewart I, had a good life, yeah. and then she went to kind of a, you know, prison slash, you know, sleepaway yeah. camp or like something. Glam, yeah. <laughs> She glamped, you yeah. know. That was about about it. But yeah, the but only, this gap, it's, what it's, could be bigger? It's vast. Uh, I I do probably think I don't know. Maybe he's trying to a, adjust in a way where he's maybe he's promising prisoners uh, that he can bring their stories to life when he's out. <laughs> like, I'm researching a role. Yeah. <laughs> like he's probably like trying to get, you know, s- film screenings there, trying to make it another Sundance in the in, in, in the prison or something like that. He's trying to bring his home to home. You know what I mean? Like maybe he's trying to do something like that. You think he's making plans? You know what I mean? Like yeah. When I get out, here's what I'm doing. Yeah, you're still. I like you, man. You, I think I'm. A, I'm. A, you're gonna be the next. <laughs> <laughs> Is he ever getting out? No idea. No. That's it. Who's his crew? kind of cruisy rolling with him. probably he's probably going to austin texas start a podcast something like that. yeah he's gonna do a podcast <laughs> I, that's how it starts I think well that... if he ever gets out <laughs> he will be in demand yeah and i can tell you i have firsthand knowledge of the menendez brothers what oh yeah what you, what when they get out they're gonna get paid like uh who's the the lady who ha- the mom had munchausen syndrome yeah and um rose bland yeah and then she killed her mom. Yeah, she's doing great. She broke up with a boyfriend, right? Yeah. yeah. She broke up with a boyfriend. Like, you know, that was coming. But the, you know. but the point is, is if Weinstein gets out, there will be a payday. Yeah. But what are they paying him for? They're paying for he's going to tell his story. Just Ew. like the Menendez. Yeah, I don't want to hear his side. <laughs> <laughs> They're all right. <laughs> like, what is the story? I don't know if he's ever getting out. When is nah. when is when is Weinstein, and he probably has a bunch of other pending stuff, right. and no one should feel sorry for that guy because he's horrible. No. And it's also Hollywood at its worst because everyone just kissed that guy's ass for 35 years. Yeah. Worst guy in the world. They all heard the rumors. They all knew the stories, but they all wanted the job. So they just kissed his ass because they preach all about inclusivity and, and Me Too and fairness and everything else. But at the end of the day, they want the job, and they'll kiss the guy's ass. Yeah who's a predator to get the job. He's uh, eligible for parole in 2039. So we got 15 years. How old is he now? He's got to be 63, 64. Oh, good for him. He's not as old as you'd think, but he made himself old and he put himself in a wheelchair. It's like um, Bill Cosby got blind and... A wine scene turned into a cripple <laughs> while he was in because it's better. Yeah, 72, so he's older than we thought. There was this, uh, this like, I don't know if it, it probably is a rumor, but like um, uh, Lord of the Rings, one of the orcs, they design uh, one of the orcs um, uh, to look like Harvey. Oh, really? Yeah, the, the, the weird, uh, gross face and the, mm-hmm. the, the the gremlin teeth and all that stuff like they it was an, that that was one of the the comps was harvey one <laughs> oh really wow <laughs> i never saw lord of the rings what side side. 
I had to watch Con Air 29 times. Right. I don't have time for the new stuff except right. for Sting. That's yeah. like, man, that's like four Con Airs, man. I get it. I understand. That's, that's how I do. Everything is for Con Air. Yeah. <laughs> I everything in Con Air. That, that's his metric. <laughs> Would you like to watch your daughter do a recital? That's yeah. like three quarters of Con Air. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what about your father's wake? That's one and a half <laughs> that's Con Airs. You understand? How many, how many Con Airs is that, man? Like, dude, only you know the... Li- okay, all right, all right. We got to drive fair. to Fresno this Friday. How long is it going to take? Probably two and a half to three Con Airs, depending on traffic. <laughs> Not the flight, the movie. The movie. I got an app called Con Air Ways. It'll tell you how long it takes to get. It'll all be broken down into Con Airs. Oh, that's great. I fuck with that. That's a great app. That's a good app, man. Uh, Jermaine Fowler. Sting is the yeah. name of the movie. Come back. You're in town, right? Hey, I live in Sherman Oaks, dude. Oh, hell. Yeah. Sherman Oaks. I'm always in Altadena walking my dog. At the, you know, the... Altadena. Yeah. Walking your dog along the trail and everything. Uh, the trail, there. the waterfall, all that, man. Yeah, it's beautiful it's gorgeous, out there. Gorgeous, man. You know, oh. the body and he still likes it. <laughs> well, come back anytime you like, Jermaine. I, oh, thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Uh, I am going to be uh, this Friday in Fresno. Uh, again, it's it's t- it's one and a half Con Airs. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I figured it out. It's one and a half Con Airs. So I'll be coming to you at the Tower Theater. And then from Fresno to Bakersfield, which is probably just a Con Air, <laughs> or maybe three quarters of a Con <laughs> Air. Yeah. Yeah. At the historic Bakersfield Fox Theater. That'll be Saturday. And then I got to fly to Chicago, so that's How many two, con two con airs two con and like two and a quarter on the way back. Word, it's always word. a little more yeah. con airs yeah. when you're coming back, you know? And you're taking con air to get there. I'm taking con air to get there. Right, I'll right. be in the cage with Danny26. or <laughs> well, Oh, yo, the, uh, Danny Trejo's character. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, I love you, man. <laughs> uh, I'll be at the Den Theater there in, uh, and then Salt Lake City, Wise Guys. Probably only a con air and a quarter to fly out there. <laughs> That'll be uh, May 3rd and 4th. This is Scott I'm Crow.com for all that. Uh, Jermaine, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate you. And Mary Morgan as well. Until next time, it's time for Jermaine and Mary and Chris saying mahalo. <laughs>